Good morning. I'm off to the gym in a moment. Hold it. I'm back from the gym. I've had lunch and I'm going to work on 80s pop this afternoon. I'm right at the end, which is in the tuning features part. So I hey, is video editing down here? Turns out all this video is kind of slightly out of focus, so I can't really use it, but I'll show you roughly what I was going to talk about and it's slightly more developed. This is the hot or not system. I've coded it up now where it shows two things side by side. You basically just quickly pick one and then it tallies up which ones you like and which ones you don't like and then gives the features that make these a final score and you can use that to inform your decision about what you're going to do. I thought it was a bit of fun. That's what I was explaining on Monday. But of course I screwed up the focus. Right, back to the video. just finished uploading the Tuesday evening video about this adjustable pen holder. I recorded most of this video a month ago, but I said I wanted to play with it for a few weeks to do a review, so that's what I recorded today. And now I've got to do the newsletter over here. Let's just knock that down a little bit. And I want to take some nice photos of these inks because these inks are lovely. Look at these. So I'm going to take some photos of these for the newsletter because over the next few days and next week I want to try these inks out. This here is the B camera, that's what I normally take photos with but sometimes it seconds as the overhead camera that sits up there. And this is the rarely used C camera that's got a big macro lens on because these are so kind of glittery. I might be able to get some nice photos or videos with the glitter, we'll see. Anyway that's my next job, take some photos of those get the newsletter finished. I'm doing all right for time. What time is it? It's 2.41, which means I've got about one and a half hours, one three quarter hours to write the newsletter. That should normally do it. So that's what today's been. It's been about making the video and the newsletter. Nothing else planned for the day, really. Time to get on. Wednesday morning breakfast, slowly getting used to the green tea. Since I started doing these, I've kind of realized that during the day, we make lots of decisions and choices about what we're going to do, and then we just get on with them. But when you sit down with like a camera and you try to explain what you're about to do and unpack why you've made that decision, you suddenly realize it's based on lots of years of experience and gut instinct and knowledge. And it can be quite hard to explain without it appearing as though you're overthinking the decision you've made. There's been a couple of times in the past few weeks where I've gone to explain something and then I've sat down and then half an hour later, I've gone, oh, I can't use any of this recording. So one of the things this morning was thinking about 80s pop. Something I'm going to do today is very simple. It's very straightforward. And I started going on this big explanation about probability and chance and art blocks and all of those type of things. So I'll do that in a tick. Oh, I'm not sure if you can see this, but... Oh, hold on. Just started snowing, which is kind of pretty. No idea if it's going to show up. I made a decision this morning about what I was going to code today, and it took literally a second to make that decision, but there's a lot to unpack behind it. So I'm going to see if I can nail it in a series of bullet points. There might be some quick edits in here. Let's see how we get on. So this is 80s Pop Roxy, which is a generative art project, and I'm hoping that it's going to be on the Artblocks platform. And what's interesting about Artblocks is the code goes on chain, so it stays there permanently, but that means that the bigger the code, the more it costs to put on chain. So there's an emphasis on keeping the code nice and small and tight. When you do that and you're working with probability and chance, you often put all those decisions in line in the code. However, on Monday, I was also talking about this idea of spitting out hundreds, if not thousands of outputs and then showing them side by side and making me choose instinctively between one or the other to try to get some insight into if there's some palettes that are really working for me, if there's some that I never click on, which means they're really not working for me. And I thought it would just be a bit of fun. It also occurred to me that as I've already started shaping the probability, there might be some things that out of a thousand outputs only appear 50 times and therefore not popping 
popping up very often in this one thing or the other thing, which could skew the results. The solution to that is to make everything equal, make all the chances equal across the board. Everything has an equal chance to turn up. And I think for that, the best thing for me to do is move all that decision code up to the top of the code, then go through my hot or not system, and then work out how or even if I should reflect those decisions in the probability code that's now right at the very top of the document. I'm going to get onto the code. I'm going to flatten this probability. Yeah, flatten this, flatten this probability. Let's go. It's mid afternoon now. I've made a whole bunch of code changes. I'm not sure how much sense I made this morning. I still wasn't really thinking that straight, to be honest. I'm going to show you some code now and hopefully it'll make a bit more sense. This is a bit unorthodox how I'm doing it this way, but let's just zoom in. Hold on. I should just screen record this, but I've moved all this code up the top here now. So you can see things like tiles across. I've got pick random. There's like a 33% chance of picking four, eight or 12. And then this is reflected all the way down. Palette names. Has it got rainbows? Has it got pipes? One in four chance of having Florida, New Orleans, Los Angeles, Miami. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying I've just flattened out all the chances. I knew while developing that some things would look better than other things. I flattened all of those and the results are truly hideous. So this is what I knew I was trying to avoid anyway. This is just horizontal lines. We're missing stuff here and here. Here's a whole bunch of horizontal lines as well with these black outlines. And the black outlines work in certain situations, but not with this thing down here. And then we've also got this super rainbow thing going on. It doesn't often snow in Shrewsbury, and if it does, it doesn't normally stay. So I figured I'd go to the castle so I could show you that nice view, but unfortunately it's shut. Anyway, what's today's plans? Today's plans is to try to get these metallic looking pipes on 80s pop, Roxy. And I think that's the last thing I need to do to it. I keep saying that's the last thing, but I really need to get this project finished now. So I am actually going to do the thing of not having a video next Tuesday. I'm gonna do these week notes work on it full time next week, although it's hopefully going to be kind of feature complete by the end of this week. Um, and then it goes into the whole getting onto art blocks, which is going to be a couple of months away anyway. But anyway, once that's up, I can focus on the next thing and the next thing. So really, that is it. Not the most exciting week this week, but this snow is pretty exciting. Let me show you some. Hold on. That's all going to be blown out. OK, back to the studio. This arrived in here is the um, magnetic board that you put down here. Magnetic easel? I'm not quite sure what they call it. Anyway, it's the flat surface you put paper on and also the italic pen holder from to here. Now, the funny thing is about being a content creator is I don't just get to rip this open because at some point I have to schedule in an unboxing so I can unbox it and show what it all looks like. And I don't have time to do that now. So the cool thing that's in there has to stay in there for, I don't know, another week or something like that. Anyway, that's not what we're here about. We're here about this. It's Friday. And this project is so close to finishing that what I got to do today is browser testing. So this is my PC that is normally off, but I fire it up for testing now and again. So we've got Edge and we've got Chrome on here and also Firefox, I'm not showing that though. And then over on the Mac, we've got Chrome, Firefox and Safari. And then I've got iPhone and then this Android phone. Right. So the point of all that is to do a first round of testing and I'm testing random seeds to make sure they all randomize properly and a whole bunch of different outputs look good. And then I'm running through exactly the same seed hash behind each of them to make sure that they all look the same on all the different platforms. Normally, once I've done that and everything is fine, I then send it off to a in the cloud browser testing thing that also tests a whole bunch of other devices. I'm less worried about that unless something comes up like it doesn't work on all Google Pixel phones. After this point, Assuming everything is right, I would then go on to optimizing for speed. However, if we look at our Safari, it's got all these little dots on here. And also on the iPhone, 
I'm not that worried about it because I don't think this is a style I'm going to be using anyway. There's only going to be 88 outputs and when it does this blending type of thing it looks too 60s and 70s to fit into an 80s inspired project. So I think the whole problem might go away but I am going to spend 10 minutes trying to figure out why it's doing it. It might just be a simple quick fix. It should come as no surprise that no, it didn't take just a few minutes. It took quite a bit longer. Luckily, I've worked out what the problem is. I know there's a workaround. Ultimately, it's easier just to strip that whole design out of the code because deep down, I knew it didn't really belong anyway. I really like it, but it's not really for this project. I'm going to wrap up now, commit the code to GitHub so it's nice and safe, and then get on with editing the video. I hope you have a wonderful and not too snowy weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye.